As to my understanding, knowledge by acquaintance occurs upon an encounter between the agent and the collective unconscious. But then again, I think collective unconscious is a loaded word and hopefully we'll have better descriptions for the contents of it. What does Bernardo think about the components of the collective unconscious? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the whole of existence. I mean, how can we even begin to, to enumerate that? Um, look, the agent behind the collective unconscious and the agent in you is the same agent, even though that agent is telling itself different stories about what, what it is. But agency is an appeal to active subjectivity, and it, it's the same. Uh, and if you can understand what I said, not merely through words, but through direct acquaintance, and it's the only way to understand what I said, because if you just say, well, the agent in me is the same agent in you, you go like, oh, yeah, perhaps, no? a nice intellectual abstraction. No, but it, it's really, <laughs> It is really the same agent. Um, so th that was my preface to the answer. Um, it's, it's the same agent. So there is no way you, you, you can be something else as an agent that will meet the collective unconscious. It's a question of which stream of experiences of that one agent becomes reflected and then recognized. Because for as long as you don't re-represent cognitively that stream of experiences on the mirror of reflection, you experience them and not know that you experience them. Um, now for the rest, yeah, it's uh, the collective unconscious. What are the components? I don't think the collective unconscious has proper parts. And now I'm using a technical myriology term. Um, it, it's, it's holistic. Uh, parts is something that arises out of intellectual thinking. It's a, it's a nominal carving of the totality of the world for convenience. In other words, it's arbitrary. Um, where does the car end and the road begins? Where does the river end and the ocean begins? All these partitionings are made nominally, arbitrarily for convenience. So we can refer to a river so we can refer to a car as a subset of this whole, but that subset is not a proper subset. It's not an, a proper part. It's an arbitrarily defined uh, set of pixels of one image. So from that perspective, not only is it impossible to name all the components of the collective unconscious as existence itself, there are no proper components. It's just an arbitrary way of dividing the cake um, so in that sense, it's as many or as, or as few, uh, few as uh, convenient, uh, convenience dictates. You can say there are countless components of the collective unconscious, or you can say there are only 10, or you can say there is only one. Uh, Jung himself, he sort of hinted at this, uh, because while he named many of the archetypes, he also said there are infinite archetypes. And by the way, the archetypes have to be differentiated from the expression of the archetypes. The expression of an archetype is not the archetype. He said, literally, the archetype is empty. And I could speak for half an hour about what is meant by that, but it gives you an idea that even the guy who came up with the concept of the collective unconscious was keenly aware that insofar as he had to use words to talk, he inevitably was hand-waving. But he made it very explicit that he was hand-waving. 